First, we will describe the neural pathways of vomiting. The process of vomiting involves both the central and peripheral nervous systems. The medulla contains the vomiting center, which is comprised of two distinct groups of brainstem nuclei, the nucleus tractus solitarius and the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus. These nuclei receive information promoting emesis from various areas. The vomiting center is triggered by a variety of stimuli, such as tickling the back of the throat, the gag reflex, gastric overdistension from overeating, and vestibular stimulation from motion sickness. The cortex also influences vomiting. This is why some people vomit after seeing someone else vomit. Another area that affects the vomiting center is the area postrema, located at the base of the fourth ventricle. The area postrema is activated by emetics, chemotherapy, radiation, and vestibular stimulation, among others. Next, we will discuss the normal basal electrical rhythm and intestinal motility. In the stomach, peristaltic activity is manifested as slow waves of contraction, which occur at a rate of 3 to 5 contractions per minute. This is called the basal electrical rhythm. These slow waves are generated by the pacemaker cells of the stomach, the interstitial cells of Cajal. The ICC generate rhythmic depolarizations and mediate neurohumoral input from enteric motor neurons. Parasympathetic stimulation increases stomach contractions, whereas sympathetic stimulation decreases stomach contractions. Next, we will describe the process of vomiting. The process of vomiting occurs by the following steps. First, there is vaguely mediated relaxation of the stomach and the lower esophageal sphincter, the LES. Second, a retrograde contraction originates in the mid-small intestine and propagates to the stomach. This contraction accounts for the frequent presence of bile in the vomit. Next, if the upper esophageal sphincter, the UES, remains closed, retching occurs. In retching, the bolus returns to the stomach through the patent LES. If the pressure is great enough to open the UES, vomiting occurs. The action of vomiting is facilitated by contraction of the diaphragm and abdominal muscles against a closed pyloric sphincter. Clinical correlation. Bulimic patients often suffer from weakened stomach muscles and damaged nerves from frequent vomiting. This can result in gastroparesis or delayed gastric emptying. Next, we'll discuss the causes of nausea and vomiting. Nausea and vomiting are seen with multiple conditions such as head trauma, chemotherapy, extreme emotion, drug withdrawal, vestibular stimulation, and several primary gastrointestinal diseases. Clinical correlation. In patients with disrupted pacemaker activity, gastric dysrhythmias can occur, and this can result in chronic nausea and vomiting. Surgically implanted devices that deliver regular periodic electrical depolarizations can be used to treat gastric dysrhythmias. Finally, we will discuss antiemetics. Antiemetics are medications that treat nausea and vomiting. They are commonly prescribed to cancer patients receiving chemotherapy and to surgery patients receiving opioid pain medications, among other conditions. There are many drugs that have antiemetic properties. The most common medications target the different receptors in the area postrema. M1 muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, including scopolamine, D2 dopamine receptors, prochlorperazine, droperidol, and metoclopramide, H1 histamine receptors, diphenhydramine, 5-HT3 serotonin receptors, ondansetron, NK1 neurokinin substance P receptors, fosoprepitant. Other antiemetics include cannabinoids, nabilone and tronabinol, glucocorticoids, and benzodiazepines, lorazepam and alprazolam. Each of these classes has their own mechanism of action and respective range of side effects. This concludes the GI Vomiting Podcast.